So I'm sure some of you have seen this, uh, this model a time or two. Uh, essentially what we're going to do is start generating plan drawings of uh, this first floor, second floor, third floor. And we'll do that in just a matter of a couple minutes. goes pretty quickly. And then we'll also show you how to jump in and just get a quick detailed view of this. And then we'll talk about the annotation side of things and getting everything put together for you. So to begin with, we're going to play with ViewWorks. If we dock this guy open, we've got a few panels here on the side of the, the palette. Each one features a little bit different uh, functionality. The first one is going to be the name views. So this is very similar to the ViewBox command in CADWorks. However, we have the ability to create these name views by selecting components, easily dragging them, modifying them. And once they're created, we can then go in and start generating drawings based off of drawing templates we've already set up for this. So that should go pretty quickly. Uh, the line views, this is, we're going to save this for the next session. And then layouts and tools, we'll jump into those a little bit when we get to them. So to begin with, we have a list of all of our views. In this drawing, I have nothing set up right now. It's entirely blank. Um, you want to go ahead and give it a name. And since we're working with plan drawings today, or in this exact example, we're just going to name it whatever our plan drawing is going to end up being. So I'm going to start with the project number, the drawing type, the area, and then finally the drawing number itself. I do want to create these views to fit the exact outline of this area. So I'm going to change my offset value down to zero. And since we're only doing plan drawings, I'm only going to turn on the top view here. So again, we're just going to work with this bottom part. I'm going to choose the insert. I'm going to select this guy and come over and select this corner. So now I have the entire boundary of my skid section. And once that's in there, I can now view my view box and start modifying it. So I'm just going to stretch it up and bring it to the bottom of this steel member here. We've got that guy going for us. And now if we just go through and copy these, I'll uh, select my base point, turn my ortho on. I know that these are 10 feet apart in elevation, so we'll just type in our dimensions there. And now we have all of our views set up and ready to go. We just need to rename them. And very similar to any Windows copy that you do on a file, we're just going to append 0102 to the end of your previously named section. So this one's going to end up being 02. And this guy will end up being 03. And again, if we just go to like a front view, you can see these are nicely cropped in there. They're going to fit our entire boundary of everything we need. Got the right elevations of everything and ready to go. Doesn't have to be this entire or this exact scenario. You could do this as a key plan and set up your entire process on a one flat level instead of, have, instead of having multiple layers in there. So let's go ahead and refresh our list. We can see now we've got our views in here. I did also want to create a, a view. We're mainly going to be working on this bottom section. And the front view would be really nice to have of this section here to get some information put out on there. So let's go through that same process and just call it pumps detail. I do want a little bit of a, a buffer edge on this, so I'm going to bump it up to six inches around. So we're, we're basically just building a box around these components, and we need to, to know how big of a, an area around the box do we want to create. And in this case, I don't want a top. Again, we already have that. We do need a front view, though. If we wanted a, a left or right, you just put the checkbox and get ready for it. So we're going to do insert. And again, I'm just going to select components that are going to fit my boundary of everything that I'm working with. So those seem to be the outermost portions of everything I have. And if we kind of spin around here, you can see my box nicely fits around all these components for me. So we have that part finished and ready to go. Now it's time to go through and start generating our actual DWG files. So down below is my working drawing directory. If we open up this folder here. Uh, you can see it's entirely blank. We have nothing going on in there at this point. So let's go ahead and start generating drawings. Uh, this first one, I do want to create a basic isometric style drawing, but just the front view of it. So we've created a, a very easy template with just one view. So 
So we'll just go ahead and drop that in there. And same thing with these guys, except this time I want to set it up to be a specific scale on a specific size paper, all that. And again, these are just DWT files, native AutoCAD, BricsCAD template files. And we go through, select those, and create the files for us. And as that's working, you can see the files are actually being generated over here on the side. At this point, we could double click, open these up, or we could go ahead and open them up from this section right here. So it's just going to open up each one of our drawings. First level, we get to the second level. Finally, the third level, and then the last file that we're opening up is this pump details. So the pump details, I still need to drop my drawing or my view into that. I wanted to kind of demonstrate another way of going about this. If you didn't want everything to come in automatically, you can still drag and drop your views in. Uh, but first, let's just kind of review some of our other files. So again, that quickly we have our plan view created for this top elevation. And from here, it's, uh, if we look inside of model space, you can see we've got all of our XREFs brought in automatically. We didn't have to do anything special with them. It brings them all in. It sets the viewport scale up automatically. We've got our title block over here. So at this point, you're ready to go and start annotating, dimensioning, bubbling, all that good stuff. We'll go ahead and close this guy and just focus on two drawings here today. So again, same thing. This is just the middle section. And we will mainly focus on the bottom and that pump details portion. Once you've finished with the, the model views, again, these are just XREFs. So one of our philosophies at ECE is you don't really create these views inside of a working drawing. You create a model view so that you can make sure that everything is XREFs and the XREFs come across properly, uh, all that good stuff. So we're finished with this. We can go ahead and close out. And we'll just work directly with our two finished drawings that we have here. Go ahead and minimize our view works section and just jump into the AnaWorks. Now most of this should feel uh, very familiar if you've seen our AnaWorks uh, customizations before. Each one of these has their own style, so you can do a label only, a leader, with an underline. Uh, but then we get to annotate our line numbers, elevations, northings, eastings, different information that you can pull from each component. So to demonstrate, we'll just go ahead and select on this insulated line right here. And go ahead and just drop that in. Now if we take a look at this line inside of CADWorks, we'll notice that we don't have the insulation added to the line number, which is pretty nice. So with our AnaWorks tool, if the line is insulated, it'll automatically grab the insulation data associated with it and append it to the line number. However, if it's not insulated, uh, you're going to just have your normal line numbers inside the line numbering system. So again, it's kind of up to you guys now if you want to include your line number or just leave it excluded at that point. But we have automated it to just check. If there's no insulation, you don't have to worry about uh, seeing the insulation dashes and extra spaces and everything with no information in there. So annotation is pretty much the same as usual. Uh, we have added some new features into here, though. So if we take a look at um, some of these guys, we can add a new constant to it. So if there's certain times that you want to add a special note to whatever the annotation is, and you want to ensure that that annotation doesn't change, then it'll go ahead and keep that information in there for you. Uh, we've also added a new feature for annotating the northing and eastings. So this one right here is just set up to grab my northing and easting. We can definitely grab that information easily now. And it doesn't have to be just pipe. You can set it up to work with steel components, pump, equipment, whatever type of vessel you have going on out there. Uh, you can add that information. So all these are highly customizable. You pick and choose what you want to see and what you want to do with them. Uh, kind of demonstrate the ability to work with equipment components. Go ahead and drag that in there. We also work with the generic nozzle attached. So it's really difficult to see in a custom pump that we have there, but we do have a, a generic nozzle attached assigned to that guy. 
So again, we just start dragging down, annotating these things. So pretty quickly, we've got the, the basics down of what we need to do on a typical drawing. Uh, some of the other things people frequently add are the tag items for a component. So quite often, we need to know what are these ball valve numbers, or control valves, or pipe supports, or instrumentation. You're going to you're going to create different types of drawings for different needs. And so with our Bubble Works tool, we've added a tag functionality on here to automate a lot of that process. So typically, you're going to go through and you're going to do these one at a time. And you're going to pick and choose which type of bubble you want to work with. Uh, is it a single line? Is it a circle? Uh, we've got quite a few options in here to match what typically comes out of CADWorks. However, to automate a lot of this, if you use the isogen message data field inside of these components, if we just come in here and take a look at here, we're going to either read this tag data or we're going to come over here and find out what type of message type you're using for the bounding box, and then what text you're also adding inside of there. So if you fill that information out and you're ready to go, we can automate this entire process. And it'll basically look at this information and compare it to the current component. And if the component says it's using a different style, we're going to get a different style bubble automatically. So now we can have all of our instrumentation and control valves come in with a circle. All of our manual valves come in with a rounded shape. Pipe supports could come in with a pointed or a rectangular or box shape. Um, kind of grabbed a few different scenarios here. Maybe your specialty items like these strainers are using the rectangle. So you kind of get the idea here. It's pretty quick, pretty powerful to go through and just pick and choose what type of annotation you want for each one of these. And then you just quickly click, click the auto button. And as you watch, I can manually move these guys around. No harm in that. Or if you want to do something a little bit quicker and easier to work with, uh, we've got some tools built in here to just automatically spread them across a certain area. You can use your ortho on or off. doesn't really matter. Now they're evenly spread out, nice and clean. You can see all that information in there. And again, with our tools, one of the biggest enhancements that we have available to you guys is all of this data is linked to the model. So for example, if we come back into the piping model, we're going to change this line number real quickly. And we're also going to modify this uh, MV101 tag number. It's going to get these guys down and out of the way a little bit. And just go now into our piping. So one of the tools I like to work with on renaming line numbers and sort is just inside of MTO Works, I can go through and create a line list, if you would. I can filter off of that. So I know I want to rename this 103. So let's go ahead and apply that. Now this filter list only shows items that are on that line number. I just come in and say, go select those. And now when I look at this data, I can easily change it from a 103 to a 303 and hit apply. Now every component on that line number has the new information. So I don't have to go through manually find them or isolate by line view palette and do a global edit, anything like that. I can just quickly update these guys really easily. And again, if we change this guy over here, go into our isogen data. Stick with the 303 theme here and OK through there. You need to save your file and also make sure that you reload your XREF. And once those guys are reloaded and ready to go, now you just come back and find your syncing tags or syncing annotation. So we synced all of our annotation. It went through, looked at every piece that was out there and available to us. If it turns red line, orange text, that's what's been modified. Now we quickly know what needs the revision cloud, and we can change that back to standard text when we're ready. And the same thing for the annotation. So if we come back through here and sync these, you can see that the line number changed. So very easy to find all the updates. You don't have to go through and re-annotate or rerun the annotation command. Just simply hit the update command on there, and you're ready to go. So pretty good stuff in there, um, nice and easy to work with. Let's go ahead and close this guy out and jump into our detail view here. 
So with this guy, we're going to go back into ViewWorks a little bit and demonstrate how to drag and drop some of your views into play. So I want to come down here to my, my View tab on the Tools, and I can look at all the different view styles that we have available to us. I can pick and choose what information I want to show up uh, as far as scale-wise and view. So let's just come in and try, a, say, a one inch, and go ahead and insert this guy. And once we insert it, now it brings in that view. And again, we're ready to go with annotating our equipment. We can grab that. We can start annotating all of our line numbers. Um, so it, right within ViewWorks, we have the ability to start using our other tools that we've had the ability to work with. <clears throat> or if you feel the need, you can come back over to the entire tab, open it up, and choose your options from there. So pretty quick, pretty easy to get some of this stuff uh, set up. And again, you can do this one at a time manually or use the entire group edit button to uh, stretch these guys over, get them into a nice clean row on the other side if we wanted to. So kind of take your pick on that realm of things. So the other side of this that was really cool and exciting for us is our new DimWorks. We're working with a tool here that's intended more for the auto ISO, which is what we're going to demonstrate for you guys next week or next session. Uh, but I also wanted to show it works pretty well on plans and sections. So again, you just hit the auto ISO button or the auto dimension button and dimension starts coming out. You probably don't need some of these fitting makeups down on these little PIs and TIs. Um, but pretty quickly, you got a very basic dimension drawing here for detail. So somebody could come out and build this pretty quickly. Uh, they are AutoCAD dimensions, so if you need to stretch them out, modify them, move them, whatever you need to, that type of stuff, it's, it's just a standard AutoCAD dimension. So hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of some of the automation that we're working with here at ECE Design. Again, our next session, we're going to talk a little bit more about the old auto ISO, doing a 3D isometric view, uh, dimensioning everything, throwing in some automatic bill of materials for you guys, uh, and then annotating and going through. Hopefully you guys have found this pretty useful. Uh, in a very little amount of time, we just generated four drawings and nearly completed most of them. So it doesn't take a lot more effort to go through, do the dimensioning, do the finish up the annotation, and you're ready to go with that stuff.